In this lecture, we're going to calculate the electric field as a result of a disk that has uniform and continuous charge. And then we're going to use that result to calculate the electric field as a result of an infinite plane. So let's begin. Suppose we have a thin circular disk of radius uppercase R. So this is our disk and this is our radius R. Calculate the electric field at point A on the axis of the disk a distance x away from the center of that disk as shown in the following diagram. So how exactly are we going to calculate the electric field at point A as a result of the continuous charge found on the disk. Well, one way to do it is to imagine the disk consists of many thin concentric rings, as shown in the following example. One such ring is shown to be the following ring with a radius lowercase r. Now we know from the previous lecture that the electric field of such a ring is given by the following equation. x the distance multiplied by q the charge on the ring divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by x squared plus r squared raised to the power of 3 divided by 2, where r, the lowercase r, is the radius of that particular thin ring. So we can first find what the electric field is as a result of this ring, and then we sum over all of these rings, so we integrate, and that's exactly what we do in this lecture. So, let's begin by supposing that the charge on one such ring, as shown in the following diagram, is equal to dq. So what exactly would the electric field be at point A as a result of such a thin ring? Well, the electric field given by this equation would be dE is equal to x multiplied by dQ divided by this same denominator. Now let's move on to step two. In step two, we're going to use the following sigma. Now sigma is defined as the charge per area. And we want to represent dQ, this dQ, in terms of sigma. Now sigma is simply equal to the charge which is dq divided by the area. Now the area of this thin ring is given by 2 pi r multiplied by dr, where dr is this quantity and our 2 comes from the fact that we have two faces on the ring. So we take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for dq. And we see that dq is equal to sigma multiplied by 2 pi r multiplied by dr. So now we take this and replace it into this. So we plug this quantity into equation i. And we see that dE is equal to x multiplied by dq, which now becomes this whole product. And we divide that by this entire denominator. So notice, we can cross a few things out. For example, we cross the pi's out, we cross this 2, and this becomes a 2. So we have x sigma r dr divided by 2 epsilon naught multiplied by this. So, now we take one of these and we integrate over all of them because this is our electric field as a result of one ring found at point A. Now we want to integrate over all the rings and that will give us our final net electric field. So our electric field is equal to the integral of dE beginning with a radius equal to 1 and ending with our radius equaling to the radius of of our disk given by uppercase r. So we take this entire fraction and we plug it in for dE and that's exactly what we get. Now let's bring some of our constants out and we get the following result. We have x multiplied by sigma divided by 2 multiplied by epsilon naught and we integrate from 0 to uppercase r r dr divided by x squared plus r squared raised to the power of 3 divided by 2. Now, if we actually integrate, we get the following result. And if we evaluate this integral, this would be our final equation. So this is our electric field at point A as a result of a thin uniform disk that has a continuous charge. 
Now, what happens if this plane expands? Let's suppose that this entire disk expands in all possible directions along the two-dimensional plane. So in that case, our R would go to infinity. And if this R becomes large, this whole fraction goes to zero. And we're simply left with the following result. So if our R goes to infinity, we have an infinite plane. And that means the electric field of an infinite plane is equal to sigma divided by 2 multiplied by epsilon naught. So this is the electric field due to an infinite plane. And notice that it remains constant because our sigma and epsilon are both constants.